Hi, welcome to the Shakespeare Underground. My name is Philip Hickman. I'm the artistic director here at Actors Theatre of Columbus. Shakespeare Underground is our ongoing series of readings featuring um, interesting plays from throughout history. The series that we're doing this summer is on Shakespeare's Apocrypha, uh, that is to say plays that have been attributed to Shakespeare or Shakespeare may have had some part in writing. Um, some of them are outright hoaxes. Tonight's play is called The Birth of Merlin or The Child Hath Found His Father. Uh, this play was originally performed in 1622, so it's possible that Shakespeare had some hand in it. Uh, later, uh, when it was published, his name was featured as a collaborator with William Rowley, but most scholars think that Rowley was uh, the sole author of the play, and Shakespeare's name may have been attached to uh, sell a few more copies. So. Um, Tonight's reading is directed by Scott Douglas Wilson, so uh, we hope you enjoy. Actors Theatre would like to thank the Greater Columbus Arts Council, the Ohio Arts Council, the Columbus Foundation, and the Rheinberger Foundation for their support. We'd also like to thank Regina Acosta Tobin with Metro Village Realty and Butech Rump HER Realtors uh, for their support of the Shakespeare Underground. All right. Uh, now, if you'd like to donate to Actors Theatre, you can find a link below. Uh, you can also look at our website to see what kind of events we have coming up. Um, we've got all kinds of classes and workshops going on this summer, uh, as well as a few special events that we have coming up. All right, thanks. Enjoy the show. You teach me language, sir, as one that knows the debt of love I own to her virtues, wherein like a true courtier, I have fed myself with hope of fair success. Believe me, youthful lord, time could not give an opportunity more fitting your desires, always provided my daughter's love be suited with my grant. Tis the condition, sir, her promise sealed. So, Constanzia? I was content to give him words for oaths. He swore so oft he loved me. That thou believest him. He is a man, I hope. Ah, that's in the trial, girl. However, I am a woman, sir. Well, the law's on thy side, then. Shat have a husband, I and a worthy one. Sir, I thank you. Uh, double the fortunes of the day, my lord, and crown my wishes too. I have a son here who in my absence would protest no less unto your other daughter. Oh, what says Lord Edwin? Will she protest as much to thee? Else must she want some of her sister's faith, sir. Of her credulity much rather, sir. My lord, you are a soldier? And methinks the height of that profession should diminish all heat of love's desires, being so late employed in blood and ruin. The more my conscience ties me to repair, the world's losses in a new succession. Necessity, it seems, ties your affections then. And at that rate, I would unwillingly be thrust upon you. A wife is a dish soon cloys, sir. Weak and disease appetites it may. Most of your making have dull stomachs, sir. Ha <laughs> ha! If that be all, girl, thou shalt quicken him. Be kind to him, Modesta. Noble Edwin, she is a woman, sir, and will be won. You give me comfort, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> now, Procleo. The king, my honored lords, requires your presence and, and calls a council for a turn of answer unto the parling enemy, whose ambassadors are on their way to court. So suddenly, the Chester, it seems, hath plied them hard at war. They sue so fast for peace. Come, noble Gloucester, let us attend the king. Toclio, what stirring news at court? We have a new holy day a coming. A holy day for whom? There's here arrived at court uh, a reverend hermit that by miracle not only saved our army, but without aid of any man, 
overthrew the pagan host. This is strange news indeed. Where is this hermit? In conference with the king that much respects him. Trust me, I long to see him. They say he is half a prophet too. What he could tell me any news of the lost prince Uder. Oh, I'll once more search those woods where when we lost him. Fortune go with you, sir. Come, fair Constantia. You are a cunning gamester, madame. It is a desperate game indeed, this marriage, where there's no winning without loss to either. Why, what, but your perfection, noble lady, can bar the worthiness of this my sir? I do beseech you. Let this mild reply give answer to your suit. For here I vow, if e'er I change my virgin name, by you it gains or loses. Oh, my wishes have the crown. Let them confine you then. As to my promise, give faith and credence. In your command, my willing absence speaks it. Noble and virtuous, could I dream of marriage, I should affect thee, Edwin. Oh, my soul. Here something tells me that weak man and woman should have their souls, their making, life and being to some more excellent use. No, no, that power to God alone that made me thus, may I whence truly know, I'll pay to him, not man, the love I owe. No tiding of our brother yet? Strange, so near the court and in our own land too, and yet no news of him. Royal sir, were he dead or taken by the foe, our fatal loss had wanted no quick herald to discuss it. That hope alone sustains me. Is answer of our message yet returned from that religious man, the holy hermit, our army being in rout, nay, quite o'erthrown? Even then, this holy man, armed with his cross and staff, went smiling on and boldly fronts the foe, at sight of whom the Saxons stood amazed, for to their seeming such clear and glorious beams, as if our men marched all in fire, wherewith the pagans fled, and our troops were all to death pursued. It is full of wonder, sir. The pagan ambassadors being come to take our answer, they have admittance. Is not our bold and hopeful general still master of the field? Their legions fallen, the rest entrenched for fear, half starved and wounded, and shall we now give all our fair advantage? What's here? A woman? Oracle, peace, Donna Bear. Speak, what are thou, holy lady? The sister of the Saxon general, warlike Astorius. My name, Artesia, who in terms of love brings peace and health to the great Aurelius, wishing she may return as fair a present as she makes tender of. A Saxon beauty. The fairest present air mine eyes were blessed with. Your warlike brother sues for a peace, you say? With endless love unto your state and person. Astorius has sent a moving orator, believe me. What thinkest thou, Donabare? Oh, noble king, were I but young again, this gilded pill might take my stomach quickly. <laughs> True, thou art old. Artesia, Sister to our enemy, fairest of creatures, tell the king, your brother, that we, in love, ha, and honor to our country, command his armies to depart our realm. A lady, return and certify your brother. Thou art too blunt and rude. Return so soon. Let her stay a while. What means your grace? 
to give her time of rest to her long journey, we would not willingly be thought uncivil. Great King of Britain, let it not seem strange to embrace the princely offers of a friend whose virtues with thine own in, in fairest merit, both states in peace and love may now inherit. Oh, she speaks of love again. Sure, tis my fear, she knows I do not hate her. Be then thyself, most great Aurelius. Oh, let my sex, though worthless in your respect, take the report of thy humanity, whose mild and virtuous life loud fame displays as being overcome by one so worthy praise. Mm, she has an angel's tongue, speak still. Hear no more on it. Lady, these childish compliments are needless. You have your answer. I come not, sir, to woo him. For folly, if you should, you must not wed him. Shame take thy tongue. Being old and weak thyself, thou dotest, most fair Artesia. The king gives thee welcome, and with these warlike Saxons, instead of truce, let a perpetual league seal our united bloods in holy marriage. Send King Astorius this happy news that thou with me hast made a league forever. And added to this state a friend and brother. Speak, dearest love, dare you confirm this title? I were no woman to deny a good so high and noble to my fame and country. Live then, a queen in Britain. He means to marry her. Death, he shall marry the devil first. What, marry a pagan, an idolator? He has won her quickly. <laughs> she was wooed afore she came, for sure, or came on purpose to conclude the match. Who dares oppose our will? Who's this? The hermit! Welcome my happiness! I wanted but thy holy blessing to make perfect the infinite sum of my felicity. Alack, uh, sweet prince, that happiness is yonder. Felicity and thou art far asunder, hell this world can never give it. <laughs> thou art deceived. See here what I have found, beauty, alliance, peace and strength of friends, the leagues confirmed. Uh, with whom, dear lord? With the great brother of this beauteous woman, the royal Saxon king Astorius. Ah, then I see, and thou art far too near thy misery. Idolaters get hence, fond king, let go, thou hugs to thy ruin and thy country's woe. Well spoke, old father, to ah. him, bait him soundly. Now, my heaven's blessed lady, I can scarce keep patience. What devil is this, that cursed Christian hermit, by whose hellish charms our army was overthrown? Why do you dally, noble sir? Oh, tempt not heaven, warm not a serpent in your naked bosom, discharge the Saxons from your court. Thou speakest like madness. It is thy weakness brings thy misery. Oh, unhappy prince, you must endure heaven's doom. Thou shalt not live to see it. How fares my lord? If my poor presence breed dislike, great prince, I am no such neglected soul that will seek to tie you to your word. My word, dear love, may my religion, crown, state, and kingdom fail should I fail thee. Our council is now dismissed. Send every hour swift post to hasten on the king, her brother, to conclude this league, this endless happy peace of love and marriage. Much reverend sir, may I without offense give interruption to your holy thoughts? Ah, uh, what would you, lady? That which till now ne'er found a language in me. I am in love. In love? With what? With virtue. Well, there's no blame in that. Nay, sir, with you, with your religious life, your virtue, your goodness. If there be a name to express affection greater, that, that would I learn and utter. Reverend sir, 
if there be anything to bar my suit to holy vows, be charitable and expose it. Uh, are you a virgin? Yes. Uh, your name? Modestia. Ah, your name and virtues meet, a modest virgin. Live ever in the sanctimonious way to heaven and happiness. There's goodness in you. I must instruct you further. Sir, on heaven I fix my love. Earth gives us grief. Our joys are all above. For this was man in innocence naked born to show us wealth hinders our sweet return. Away, follow me no further. I'm none of thee, brother. <laughs> what, great with child, and knows not who the father aunt? I'm ashamed to call thee sister. Believe me, brother, he was a gentleman. Nay, nay, I believe that, Joan, Joan, sister Joan. Can you tell me his name, who did it? How shall we call my cousin, your bastard, when you birthed it? Alas, I know not the gentleman's name, brother. I met him in these woods, the last great hunting. Not his name? What? Why, this shows your low country breeding. Had you but heard him swear, you would have thought... I, as you did, swearing and lying goes together still. Did his oath skit you with child? <laughs> Dear brother, stay and help me find him out. What, who should I find? Who should I ask for? Alas, I know not. Yet some happy fate may guide us till we meet him. <laughs> well, I'll do my best for you. If he have lands, he shall have an heir. If he has patience, he shall have a wife. If he has neither lands nor patience, she shall have a whore. <laughs> That's so ho, boy, so ho, so ho. So ho, boy, so ho, illa ho, illa ho. Hark, sister, there's one who hollows to us. What a wicked world is this. A man cannot so soon name a whore, but a knave comes presently. Oh, my thoughts are lost forever in amazement. Could I but meet a man to tell me of my lost love's beauties? He thinks he talks of a woman, sister. This might be he, brother. Here did I see her first, here view her beauty. Oh, had I known her name, I had been happy. Sister, this is he, sure. He knows not thy name, neither. Couple wise fools, you faith, to get children and not know one another. <laughs> you weeping leaves upon whose tender cheeks doth stand a flood of my tears at my complaint, who heard my vows and oaths. Ah, uh, uh, he has been a great swearer too, and felt such desire. For having overtook her, I saw and felt such desire. Pox on your fingering, did he feel, sister? One poor sight was all, converts, converts my pleasure to perpetual thrall, for here I vow to you my mournful plants, never to part hence till I know her name. Give me thy hand, sister. And the child has found his father. This is he, sure as I am a man. Had I been a woman, <laughs> these sweet words would have won me, and I should have a great belly, too. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, most honest and fleshly-minded gentleman. Uh, give me your hand, sir. Huh. What art thou, that thus rude and boldly dares take notice of a wretch so much allied to misery as I am? Uh, nay, sir, for our alliance, I shall be found to be a poor brother-in-law of your worship. Uh, the gentlewoman you spake of is my sister. Joan, go to it. Uh, come forward, John, speak to him. Have you ever seen me, lady? Seen ye? <laughs> it seems she has felt ye, too. Do you not know me, sir? Know thee? As I do thunder, hell, and mischief? Witch! Scullion! I, I see he will marry her. He speaks so like a husband. Death! Strumpet! 
villain, where have you ever seen me? Oh, sir, if ever you did speak to me, it was in a smoother prize in fairer language. Lightning consume me if I ever saw thee. My rage overflows my blood. All patience flees me. Oh. Help! Help! Murder! Oh. 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 This is why well, came the sound. Uh, see where she is. And the prince. Oh, the price of all our wishes. The prince, you say? He's made a poor subject of me, I am sure. Sweet prince, noble Uther, speak. How fare you, sir? Dear sir, recall yourself. Your fearful absence hath won too much already on the grief of our sad king. His silence and his looks argue distraction. Nay, he's mad, sure. He will not acknowledge my sister, nor the child, neither. Let us entreat, your grace. Come along with us. Your sight will bring new life to the king, your brother. Will you go, sir? Very well. Guide me. All's hell I see. Man may, man may change air, but not his misery. Good sir. But one word with you, ere you leave us. With me, fair soul. Yeah, Zook, she'll have a fling with him, too. Oh, mine eyes leak. <laughs> have you never seen me, sir? Seen thee? Sir Foot. Well, I have seen many fair faces in my time. Oh. In prison. Look, look up and, and, and do not weep so. <laughs> it is enough. Oh, sir, I swoon. Sir Foot, tis fallen. This place is enchanted, sure. Look to the woman. Odd fellow. Oh, she's dead. She's dead. Oh, Joan, Sister Joan, why don't go to it? Oh, give me pardon, sir. Twas too much joy oppressed my loving faults. I knew you were too noble to deny me. Oh, where is the handsome lad? Who, the gentleman? Yeah. He's gone, sister. Oh, I am undone then. Run, tell him I did but faint for joy. Unnatural brother, show me the path he took. Speak. Which way went he? This way, that way, through the hairy bushes there. Where it threw fire, the journey's easy, winged with sweet desire. Yowza. I'll follow her for kindred's sake. Come, Edwin, Peter. I do not like this hasty marriage. Artesia was quickly wooed and won, not six days since arrived an enemy to sue for peace. And now, crowned, crowned queen of Britain, this is strange. Mm, her brother, too, made quick speed in coming, leaving his Saxons and his starving troops to take the advantage while it was offered. For heaven, I fear the king's too credulous. Our army is discharged, too. And General Edel commanded home. Brother Edwin, have you seen him since? He's come to court. But will not view the presence? Nor speak unto the king. He's so discontent. At this so strange alliance with the Saxon as nothing can persuade his patience. Edel of Chester is a noble soldier. 
So is he, by the rude, even more faithful to the king and kingdom, howe'er his passions guide him. Welcome to our court, brave earl. Do not deceive me by your flatteries. Is not the Saxon here, the league confirmed, the marriage ratified? The court divided with pagan infidels, the least part Christians, at least in their commands, all oh, the gods. Reserve your patience, sir. Reserve your honours, lords. Your country's safety, your lives, and lands from strangers. What black devil could so bewitch the king, so to discharge a royal army in the height of conquest? They even already made victorious to give credit to such an enemy, a starved foe, a struggling fugitive, beaten beneath our feet, so low dejected. It was the king's will. It was your want of wisdom that should have laid before his tender youth the dangers of a state whose foreign powers bandy for sovereignty with lawful kings. They never fail to seek the blood and life of all competitors. Your words sound well, my lord, and point at safety, both for the realm and us. But why did you, within whose power it lay, as general, with full commission to dispose the war, lend ear to parley with the weakened foe? Oh, the good gods. And on that parley came this embassy. You will hear me. Your letters did declare it to the king, both of the peace and all conditions brought by the Saxon lady, whose found love has thus bewitched him. I will curse you all as black as hell, unless you hear me. Your gross mistake would make wisdom herself run madding through the streets and quarrel with a shadow. Death, why killed ye not the woman? Oh, my lord. The devil take me quick had I, been, had I been by, and all the women of the world were barren. She should have died, ere he had married her on these conditions. It is not reason that directs you thus. Then I have none, for all I have directs me. Never was a man so palpably abused, so basely martyred, bought and so to scorn. My honour, Fame and hopeful victories, the loss of time, expenses, blood and fortune, all vanished into nothing. Whoa, this rage is vain, my lord. What the king does, nor they, nor you can help. My sword must fail me then. Against whom will you expose it? What's that to you? Against all the devils in hell to guard my country. Oh, these are airy words. Sir, you tread too hard upon my patience. I speak the duty of a subject's faith. What the king did, you had not dared to cross it. I will trample on his life and soul that says it. You know it's not what you say is. Uh, hold us me back, Cater. I take my leave of thee, sir. For wisdom's sake, my lord. Sir, I'll leave him and you and all of you, the court and king, and let my sword and friends shuffle for Edel's safety. Stay you here. Of the Saxons till they cut your throats or bring the land to serve our slavery. Go and repent the times these foul misdeeds, for in this league all our kingdom bleeds, which I'll prevent or perish. See how his rage transports him. These passions set apart, a braver soldier breathes not in the world this day. For sure, brother Cater. For sure. <laughs> why is the court so dull? Again, fill wine. Must we begin the revels? Be it so then. Uh, reach me another cup. Now, to our loved queen, the bright Artesia, and the royal Saxon king, warlike Astorius. Darius, king of the Saxons, saluting. I drink no health, great king. If I did, I would be loath to part with health to those that have no power to bring it back again. Mistake not, hermit. It is the argument of love and duty to our queen and us. But he owes none, it seems. He speaks not like a guest to grace a wedding. No, sir, but like an envious imposter. Christian slave, 
a cynic. What virtue could decline your kingly spirit to such a respect of him whose magic spells met with your vanquished troops and turned your arm to that necessity of fate which through despair of any hope to stand but by his charms had been defeated in a bloody conquest? Twas magic, hell-bred magic, sir. Sir, sure, you are deceived. No, it was the hand of heaven that in this hermit's virtue gave us victory. Is there a power in man can strike such fear or create spirits in recreant bosoms above the present sense? To blind the senses they are man with ghostly apparitions, whereby that hermit's raised to cross our Saxon fortune. There is a law tells us that words want force to make deeds void. Examples must be shown, ere I believe it, brother. Tis easily performed, believe me, sir. Propose your own desires and give but way to what our pagan sorcerer supreme, their mighty proximus here shall straight perform, brother. <laughs> We could not wish a greater happiness than what this satisfaction brings with it. Come, that it proximus. This task be thine. Let thy great charms confound the opinion this Christian armor by his spells hath falsely won. Great king, propound your wishes then. What persons of what state, what numbers, or how armed please your own thoughts? They shall appear before you. Oh, strange art. What thinkest thou, reverend hermit? Uh, sir, it will be my joy to tell that I was here to laugh at him and hell. <laughs> I like thy confidence. His saucy impudence. Proceed to the magical trial. Speak your desires, my lord, and be it placed in any angle underneath the moon, <sighs> the center of the earth, the sea, the air, the region of the fire, nay, hell itself, and I'll conjure it. Uh, we'll have no sight so fearful, only this. Uh, Sorcerer Proximus, show me here the two great champions of the Trojan War, Achilles and brave Hector, our ancestor. Tis done, my lord! Command a halt and silence, as each man will respect his life for danger. In the name of Vigo, the great Carpathian, spirits, rise! The apparitions come. Oh, see, Proximus brings forth Hector, attired and armed after the Trojan manner, with target, sword, and battle axe. Now Achilles, uh, with a spear and falchion. Trumpets sound alarm. The wraith-like warriors begin the fight. Huh? A hermit steps between them. How the spirits tremble before him. Heavens above disperse these false fiends. Demons quake before the one true God. Why well, fear you, spirit soldiers? Oh, the Christian huh? hermit. The Christian hermit has bested the idolatrous charms of Proximus. No! No! <laughs> what, Adonam Plus, sir? I'll command them back for shame. What? What power overawes my spells? Return, you hellhounds. Double damnation sees you. By all the infernal powers, the prince of devils is in this hermit's habit. What else could force my spirits quake or tremble thus? Weak argument to hide your want of skill. <laughs> Believing pagan, only God can control both hell and thee. Disgrace and mischief on force new charms. Uh, we have had enough, Proximus. <clears throat> uh, my lord, uh, my liege, what news I bring? The prince, your brother, lives and comes to grace this high and heavenly marriage. Why dost thou flatter me? to make me think such happiness attends me. Force me, tis he, Prince Uta. Oh, how welcome am my second comfort, Artesia, my dearest love. It is my brother, my princely brother, all my kingdom's hope. 
you have so free a welcome, sir, from me. Your presence has such power, I swear. Tis she. Tis she, I swear. Oh, ye good gods, tis she. That face within those woods where first I saw her captured my senses. How came she to this place, Brother Aurelius? Speak that angel's name, sir. It is Artesia, the royal Saxon princess, now my wife and queen. Ha! Your wife? What troubles you, dear brother? Why with so strange and fixed an eye dost thou behold my joy? You are not well, sir. Oh, you immortal powers! Why has poor man so many entrances? For sorrow, so, for sorrow to creep in at, when our senses is much too weak to behold his happiness. No more. <clears throat> I see thou art a rival in the joys of my high bliss. Come, my Artesia, the days most praised when tis eclipse by night. Stay, hear but a word. Yet now I think on it. This is your wedding night, and were it mine, I should be angry with least loss of time. Envy speaks no such words, has no such looks. Sweet rest unto you both. Lights to our chamber, on, on, set on. <laughs> she run me by the hand and spake to me with the most passionate affection. Perhaps she loves and now repents her choice in marriage with my brother. She's banished from my bosom now forever. The noble prince, I take it, sir. You speak me what I should be, lady. No, by that name, sir, Queen Artesia greets you, commending her affection in this jewel, sir. She binds my service to her. Ha! A jewel? It resembles something I have seen in her. It is an artificial crab, sir. A creature that goes backwards. Alas, there is no moral in it alludes to herself. Well, she is a woman. And, like this sea crab jewel, may use her legs and eyes two several ways. When wilt thou bring me to thy lady? Next opportunity I attend you, sir. Thanks. Take this and commend me to her. Think of your sea crab, sir, I pray. What should all this tend to? If it be love or lust that thus incites her, the sin is horrid and, and incestuous. If it do betray my life, what hopes she by it? I will confer with her, and if I find lust has given life to envy in her mind, I may prevent the danger. Come, sister, thou art all fool, man, woman. Privy, have patience. We are now at court. At court? <laughs> Was there ever any country or woman traveled to court for a husband? I know this journey will be happy. Oh, brother, this night my sweet friend came to comfort me. I saw him and embraced him in me arms. Why did you not hold him? and call me to help you. Alas, I thought I had been with him still. But when I wag... Ah, pox of all loggerheads. Then you were in but a dream all this while. See, see, here comes more courtiers. Pray, view them all well. Come, come, I'll hear no more aunt. Go, Lord Edwin, tell her this day, her sister Constanzia shall be married to Cader, Earl of Cornwall. So shall Modestia to thee, brave Edwin, if she'll have my blessing. She is addicted to a single life. She will not hear of marriage. Cush, fear it not. Use your best skill, my lord. And if you fail, I have a trick that she'll do it. Haste, haste about it. Sir, I am God. <clears throat> Lo, we would entreat a word, sir. What lackest thou, fellow? 
I lack a father for this child, sir. It may be you, for anything we know. Oh, of me? Prithee, where is it? No, uh, tis not born yet, sir. Uh, tis forthcoming, you see. What do you think of my sister, eh? Why, I think if she never had a husband, uh, she's a whore, and thou a fool. Farewell. I thank you, sir. There was never a sister who would have abused a poor brother as thou hast done. I pined away with fretting. There is nothing but flesh and bones about me. Hark, sister, does it not thunder? Oh, yes, most fearfully. Thunder strike and cloven hooves come round. Devil in the flesh of man bestride the ground. <laughs> Tis he, brother, my love has come. Yonder he goes. Where? Oh. Where? I'll stop him if the devil not be in him. Oh, dear friend, pity my distress. For heaven and goodness do but speak to me. She calls me and yet drives me headlong from her. Poor mortal, thou and I are much uneven. Thou must not speak of goodness or of heaven. The little fruit thou bearest within thy womb shall be famous till the day of doom. Slide, who's that talk so? I can see no body. Then thou art blind or mad. See where he goes and beckons me to come. I'll follow thee in spite of fear or death. <laughs> Slide, she's stark mad, sure, and talks to a shadow, but for I can see no substance. Well, all after her, the father must be found. Irreverent, sir. By you, my heart hath reached religiously to vow my chaste thoughts up to heaven and make you now the witness of my faith. Angels, assist thy hopes. Ah, huh? thou art my promised wife. Oh, find remorse, fair soul, and yet recant thy vow. Never. The world and I are parted now forever. To find the way to bliss, thou hast learned the hardest lesson well, I see. Oh, reverend sir, persuade her not to leave me. My lord, I do not, nor to cease to love ye. I only pray her faith may fix its stand. Marriage was blessed, I know, with heaven's own hand. <laughs> Good sir, you say you love me, gentle Edwin. Even by that love, I do beseech you. Leave me. Oh, think of your father's tears, your weeping friends. Would I were dead to all. Oh. <laughs> Why do you weep? What joy, what pleasure can give you comfort in a single life? The contemplation of a happy death, which is to me so pleasing that I think no torture could divert me. What's this world? When you'd have me walk, but a sad passage, when death will surely summon us all to appear, to plead us guilty or our bail to clear. What music's this? Oh, now resolve and think upon my love. This sounds the marriage of your beauteous sister, virtuous Constantia, with a noble cater. Look. And behold this pleasure. It is vanity not worth the sight. See, see, she's yonder. Pass on, son Cader, daughter Costanzia. I beseech you all, salute her not. Edwin, what good success? Uh, nothing as yet. Oh, see, see, her eye is fixed upon her sister. 
seem careless all, and take no notice of her. Come, come, my Constantia. Pray, stay, lady. Are not you she whom I did once call sister? Since you neglect your fame and friends together, in you I drown a sister's name forever. Your looks did speak no less. This sight has moved her. I knew this trick would take on nothing. <laughs> Though you disdain me in a sister's name, yet charity, methinks, should be so strong to instruct ere you reject. I am a wretch. I may recant this low, despised life and please those friends whom I've moved to grief. She's coming, ye faith. Be merry, Edwin. Since you desire instruction, you shall have it. What is it should make you thus desire to live thou to a single life? Because I know I cannot fly from death. Oh, my good sister, I beseech you, hear me. Our best happiness here but lasts a night, whose burning tapers make false wear seem right. And knowing this vain world at last will leave him, shake off these robes that help but to deceive him. Her words are powerful. I am amazed to hear her. Her soul's enchanted with infected spells. Leave her, best girl, for now in thee I'll see the fruits of age, posterity, out of my sight! Oh, sure, I was half asleep or drunk when I begot thee. Good sir, forbear. What say you to that, sister? Uh, the joy of children, a blessed mother's name. Who can enjoy it without sorrow, rather? At best we do but bring forth our heirs to die, and fill the coffins of our enemy. Oh, my soul! Hear her no more, Constanzia. She's sure bewitched with error. Leave her, girl. Then I must leave all goodness, sir. Away, stand off, I say. How's this? I have no father, friend, no husband now. Oh, my best sister, my soul's eternal friend, forgive the rashness of my distempered tongue. Art thou mad, fond woman? What's thy meaning? To seek eternal happiness in heaven. Think of thy vow, there art my promised wife. Yeah. Pray, trouble me no further. You, holy priest, be equal to the gods and consummate my marriage with this woman. Herself gives bar, my lord, to your desires and our performance. Tis against the law and orders of the church to force a marriage. How I am wrong! I am abused past sufferance. Let me call thee daughter. Me, wife. Me, also wife. Your words are air. No oh, bewitched girls. Tempt not an old man's fury, and do not make me curse you. Dear Father, here at your feet we kneel. Grant us but this. Save us life. Save not our bodies, but our souls from death. Rise with my blessings. Have patience, noble Cada, worthy Edwin, and give all grief to me. It's light and darkness, earth and heaven dissolve. Be one piece again and turn to chaos. Break all your works, your powers, and spoil the world. Or if you will maintain earth, still give way and life to this abortive birth now coming. Whose fame shall add unto your oracles, assist you spirits of the infernal deeps. Squint eyed Eric, though, midnight incubus, rise, rise to aid this birth prodigious. Bring this mixture of infernal seed to humane being.
in honour of this child, the fate shall bring all their assisting powers of knowledge, art, learning, wisdom, all the hidden parts of all admiring prophecy to foresee the events of time to come. His art shall stand as a wall of brass to guard the Britain land. Even from this minute all his arts appear manlike in judgment, person, state, and years. Merlin Sylvester will the child be named. His birthright power unknown he acclaimed. Now Merlin's name in Brittany shall thrive. Whilst men inhabit here, or fate can give power to amazing wonder. Envy shall weep and mischief shake her ebony wings, whilst all the world of Merlin's matches. Well, I wonder how my poor sister does. After all this thundering, I think she's dead. Sister, Sister Joan! Joan, go to... Where are you? Here, yeah, brother. Stay but a while. I come to thee. Oh, brave. She's still alive. As she speaks, and speaks cheerfully, methinks. Come, my dear Merlin. Oh, now, what half... What moon calf has she got with her? Why dost thou fix thine eyes so deeply in that book? To sound the depth of arts, of learning, wisdom, and knowledge. Oh, my dear, dear son, these studies fit thee when thou art a man. Why, mother, I can be but half a man at best. And that is your mortality. The rest in me is spirit. Tis not meat nor time that gives this growth and bigness. No, my years shall be more strange than yet my birth appears. Ah, oh, look, mother, there's my uncle. How dost thou know him? You never sourced him. Yes, I know him. And know the pains he has taken for you to find out my father. Give me your hand, good uncle. What? Do you know me, sir? <laughs> yes. By the same token that even now, you kissed the swineherd's wife in the woods and would have done more if she would have let you, uncle. A witch, a witch, a witch, sister, he is either... A witch or a conjurer, he could have not known this else. Pray, love him, brother. He is my son. <laughs> By his beard, he's more like your husband. Let me see, is your great belly gone? Yes, and this, the happy fruit. What? This is hard a joke. A child born with a beard on his face? Yes, and strong legs to go and teeth to eat. I've heard of some babies that was born with teeth, but none with such a talking tongue before. Come, come. You must use him kindly, brother. Did you but know his worth, you will make much of him. Make much of a monkey? This is worse than Tom Thumb that let a fart in his mother's belly. A child to eat, speak, eat, and need a barber before he was born. Why, sister, this is monstrous and shames all of our kindred. He comes furnished to salute the world, a gift of his great father. Why, of what profession is your father, sir? Hmm, uh, he keeps a hot house in the Low Countries. Will you see him, sir? See him? Why, sister, has the child found his father? Yes, and, and I'll fetch him, uncle. Do not uncle me, for my conscience some baboon begot thee. Surely thou art deceived, sister. This 
urchin cannot be of thy breeding. No. Now, my uncle, see, the child has found his father. This is he. The devil it is! <laughs> this is your sweetheart, sister? Do not bring to me a ragamuffin with a face like a frying pan. Give me your hand, clown. I must call you brother. Not till you have married my sister. For all this while, she's but your whore, sir. Thou art too plain. I'll satisfy that wrong to her, and thee, and all with liberal hand. Come, why art thou fearful? Nay, I'm not afraid. And thou art the devil, sir. <laughs> Keep with thy sister still, and I'll supply your wants. You shall lack nothing that gold and wealth can purchase. Thank you, brother. Uh, pray, how shall I call your son, my cousin here? Hmm. His name is Merlin. Merlin? Your hand, Merlin, cousin Merlin. Uh, for your father's sake, I accept you to my kindred. If you grow in all things as your beard does, uh, you will be talked on. <laughs> All Brittany shall ring of Merlin's fame. I wonder at his acts. Go hence to Wales. There live a while. There vorture the castles and strongholds which cannot stand, unless supported by young Merlin's hand. There shall thy fame begin. Wars are breeding. The Saxons practice treason yet unseen, which shortly shall break out. Fair love, farewell. Dear son and brother, here must I leave you all, yet still will I be near at Merlin's call. Well, and will you go, uncle? Yes, I'll follow you, cousin. I do horribly suspect that this brother-in-law of mine really is the devil, though he hide his horns and with that hat and feather. I spied his cloven foot for all his cunning. <laughs> come, come. Time calls our close complots to action. Go, Proximus, with winged speed fly hands. I are thee to Wales. Salute great Vortiger with these our letters. Bid the king to arms, tell him we have no friends. More forces land in Norfolk and Northumberland. Bid him make haste to meet us. If he keep his word, we'll part the realm between us. Bend all thine art to quit the late disgrace the Christian hermit gave thee. Make thy revenge. That thought, sir, spurs me on till I have wrought their swift destruction. Acta, be vigilant. Speak, are thy thoughts possessed? All sure. The queen, your sister, hath contrived the cunning plot so sure <laughs> as that an instant. The Britain brothers shall be surprised and taken. And both shall be. Bold, Edo, the stern general, that now, contrary to the king's command, hath reunited all his Cassia troops, and this way beats his drum to threaten us. Then our plot's discovered. Come, that a fool. Where is my queen, sister? In conference with the prince. Their conference, I hope, shall end in blood. <laughs> <laughs> come, come, you do but flatter. What you term love is but a dream of blood. I must be wary. Her words are dangerous. True, we'll speak of love no more then. Nay, if you will, you may. Tis but in jest, and yet so children play with fiery flames and covet what is bright, but 
feeling his effects aboard the light. Make your example thus. You have a kiss? Was it not pleasing? Above all name to express it. Yet now the pleasure's gone, and you have lost your joy's possession. Yet when you please, this flood may ebb again. A taste once more of what you may enjoy. <sighs> Impudent whore! I were more false than atheism can be. Should I not call this high felicity? Enough. Help, husband, king, Aurelius, help! Help rescue betrayed Artesia! Nay then, tis that I am betrayed, I see. With thy blood I'll end thy treachery. Help, Saxon princes, treason! Oh, rescue the queen! Strike down the villain! Call in the guards. The prince is in danger. Take down their weapons! Slave, wert thou made of brass, my sword should bite thee. Withdraw on pain of death. Where is the traitor? Oh, save your life, my lord. Let it suffice my beauty forced my own captivity. Who did attempt to wrong thee? Hear me, sir. Oh. My sad soul was thou, my dear Artesia. Let us know thy wrongs and our own dangers. The prince, your brother, with these Britain lords, have all agreed to take me hence by force and marry me to him. The devil shall wed thee first. Thy baseness and thy lust confound and rot thee. But he courted me even now and in mine ear promised to shut you up with some prison, uh, or which is worse, I fear, to murder you. Is all false as hell and foul as she is. You know me, sir. Yes, deadly sin. We know you and shall discover all your villainy. Edel, forbear. The treasons, sir, are plain. Thy are the soldiers' lords so near the court. Nay, why came he in arms so suddenly? You fleeting antics, do not wake my fury! Fury? That's being, do not urge me. Uh, good sir, keep farther from them. Oh, my sick heart, she is a witch by nature, devil by art. Bite thine own slanderous tongue, tis thou art false, brother. Stand on your guard, my lord. We are friends, and all our force is yours. The spoil and rob the kingdom! Oh, be silent! Silent! How long till doomsday shall I stand by and hear mine honor blasted with foul treason? The state hath lost your life in danger, yet be silent! Yes, my blunt lord, unless you speak your treasons. Sir, let your guards as traitors seize them all, and let tortures force a confession from them. Wild fire and brimstone ate they. Hear me, sir. Sir, I'll not hear you. But you shall. I tell you, sir, these serpents have betrayed your life and kingdom. Does not every day bring tides of more swarms of lowly slaves? The awful fugitives of barren Germany, the land upon our coasts, and by our neglect, Settle in Norfolk and Northumberland. They come as aids and safeguards to the king. Away! Suffer a gilded rascal, a low-bred, despicable creeper, an insufferable toad to spit his poison venom in your face. Sir, how durst thou? Do not reply, you cur, for by the gods thou, though the king's presence guide, guard thee, I shall break all patience. And like a lion roused to the spoil, shall run foot upon thee and devour thee quick. Speak, sir. Will you forsake these scorpions or stay till they have stung you to the heart? You are traitors all. This, our wife, our queen. Brother Astorius, troop your Saxons up. We'll head to Winchester, raise more powers to man with strength the castle Camelot. 
Go hence, false men. Join you with Vortiger, the murderer of our brother Constantine. We'll hunt both him and you with dreadful vengeance. He sure be witch. But what counsel now for safety? All speed we can preserve the person of our king and kingdom. Which to effect his best march hence to Wales and set on Vortiger before he joins forces with the Saxons. On then, with speed for Wales and Vortiger. How now, uncle? Ah, cousin Merlin. <clears throat> Have you heard the news in Wales here? Uncle, let me prevent your care and counsel. It will give you better knowledge of all my cunning. You would prefer me now, in hope of gain, to Vortiger, king of the Welsh Britons, to whom are all the artists summoned now that seeks the secrets of futurity. The bards, the druids, wizards, conjurers, no witch or juggler but his descent to calculate the strange and feared event of his prodigious castle now in building, where all the labors of the day are ruined still in the night. And to this place you would have me go. Uh, this is thy father, not thy mother, wit. Thou hast taken my tale into thy mouth and spake my thoughts before me. Therefore away. Shuffle thyself among the conjurers, and be a made man before thou comest of age. Nay, nay, but stay, uncle. You overslip my dangers. The prophecies and all the cunning wizards have certified the king that this, his castle, can never stand till the foundations laid with mortar tempered with the fatal blood of such a child whose father was no mortal. What's this to thee? Uh, who will take thee for a child with such a beard of thy face? Pish! I must not go. Lend me your ear for a while. I'll give you reasons to the contrary. Sir, this is an endless piece of work the king has sent me about. Far kings may do it. The like has been done to find out the unicorn, which I'll be sooner found than this fiend-begotten child I seek. Oh, I pox on these conjurers, how they're cunning, and could not tell me where to find them. Uncle, your persuasions must not prevail with me. I know mine enemies better than you do. I say, thou'rt a bastard, then, if thou disobey thy uncle. Or shall thy uncle be an ass? <laughs> Bless you, friends. Pray, what do you call this small gentleman's name? His name is my cousin, sir. His education is my sister's son, but his manners are his own. Why, why ask ye, good sir? My name is Merlin. Yes, and a go shock was his father, for I'm sure his mother was a windsucker. Or this is he I seek for. Uh, well, sir, uh, it were fit you did resolve for speed. You must go unto the king. My service, sir, shall need no strict command. It shall obey most peaceably. But needless, tis to fetch what is brought home. My journey may be stayed. The king is coming hither with the same quest you bore before him. Hark, this drum will tell thee. Oh, bless me. This is some cunning indeed. Lead on, you great hairy child. Hail, hey, King Vortiger. A letter delivered unto you by Proximus, Sorcerer Supreme. Scarius and Octa, we shall salute with succor against Prince Uther and Aurelius. Well, there's nothing interrupts our way so much as of the erection of this fatal castle, Proximus. As erst I did affirm, still I maintain. The fiend begotten child must be found out whose blood gives strength to the foundation. It cannot stand else. Ha! 
Tis so. Then Proximus, by this intelligence he should be found. Speak. Is this he you tell of? Yes, sir. And this, and I, his uncle, and she, his mother. Woman, is this the son? It is, my lord. What was his father? Oh, where lives he? Martha, speak freely and I'm astonished. That which you dare to act, dread not to name. In which I shall betray my sin and shame. But since it must be so, then no great king bought to Jer. All that myself knows of him is this. In pride of blood and beauty I did live, no mortal creature worthy to enjoy me. In midst of this most leprous disease, a seeming fair young man appeared unto me, and with him brought along a conquering power, and from whose embraces this issue came. What more he is, I know not. <laughs> Some incubus of spirit of the night begotten then, for sure no mortal did it. No matter who, my lord, leave further quest, since tis as hurtful as unnecessary more to inquire. Go to the cause, my lord, why you have sought me thus. Doubt not that thou knowest, I sought thee for the blood. By whose direction? By mine! Upon thy blood must the foundation rise of the king's castle. It cannot stand else. Hast thou such leisure to inquire my fate, and let thine own hang perilous, careless over thee? Knowest thou what pendulous mischief roofs thy head? How fatal and how sudden. Ha! Beard and abortive, thou foretell my danger, my lord. He trifles to delay his own. No, I yield myself, and here before the king, if thy fate fall not, thou hast spoke all truth, and let my blood satisfy the king's desires. If thou thyself wilt write thy epitaph, dispatch it quickly. There's not a minute's time twixt thee and thy death. Ha <laughs> ha! A stone, a stone falling! Oh, oh no, 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 what is that? What is it, what is it? I'm at the stone! Oh, oh, my hand! Ah, oh. Aye, oh. so thou uh, mayest die stoned. <laughs> this is above admiration. Look, is he dead? Uh, yes, sir, here's brains. Oh. Merlin, there's no more of this stone fruit ready to fall, is there? <laughs> Give your uncle a little fair warning. Remove that shape of death. And now, my lord, uh, for clear satisfaction of your doubts, Merlin will show the fatal cause that keeps your castle down and hinders your proceedings. Stand there. And by an apparition see the labor and the end of your destiny. Mother and uncle, you must be absent. Uh, come, brother, you'll offend him. Strike one, thunder and lightning. Dragons appear, one white, one red. See, they fight. The means is magic. Be not amazed, my lord, for on the victory of loss or gain, your fate, your life, and kingdom all depends. Therefore, observe it well. I shall. Heaven be auspicious to us. The two dragons fight again. Behold, the white dragon drives off the red. The conquest is on the white dragon's part. Now, Merlin, faithfully expound the meaning. Grace, then, must not be offended with me. Shall I blame the prophet? That foretells me my dangers. Then no, my lord, there is a dampish cave, the nightly habitation of these dragons, vaulted beneath where you would build your castle. 
whose enmity and nightly combats there maintain a constant ruin of your labors. To make it more plain, the dragons then, yourself be token, and the Saxon king, the vanquished red is, sir, your dreadful help. Oh, my fate. Uh, nay, you must hear with patience, royal sir. You slew the lawful king Constantius. It was a red deed. The crown his blood did cement. Seek for your safety, sir, and spend no time to build the airy castles, for Prince Uta, armed with vengeance for his brother's blood, is hard upon you. If you mistrust me, and to my words crave witness, sir, then no. Here comes a messenger to tell you so. Exit Merlin in smoke. My lord! Prince Uter and Edel, the great general, come to meet you with full power. Oh, with a full vengeance they mean to meet us. How will no lose ground, nor shall their numbers fright us. If it be fate, cannot be withstood. We got our crown, so let it be lost in blood. Stay and advise. Hold all. Where are our enemies? Or do you mean to we fight amongst ourselves? Fie on such slow delays. So fearful men that had to pass over a flowing river, stand on the bank to parley the danger, till the tide rises and the mist swallowed? Is not the king in the field? Proud Vorager, the traitor, is in field. The murderer and usurper. Let him be the devil, so I may fight with him. For heaven's love, sir, march on. Oh, my patience! Will you delay until the Saxons come to aid his party? There's no such fear. Pretty, be calm a while. Hark! It seems he comes or sends to us. If it be for parley, I will drown the summons. If all our drums in hoarseness choke me not. Nay, prithee here, from whence art thou? From the King Vortiger. Traitor, there's no such alarm. There's none such alarm, traitor. There's none such alarm. Drum, strike, slaver on my honor. I will break thine head and beat the drum's head about thine ears. Hold, noble Edel. Let's hear what articles he can enforce. What articles of what conditions can you expect to value half your wrong? Unless he kill himself by a thousand tortures and send his carcass to appease your vengeance for the foul murder of Constantius. Tis true. My brother's blood is crying to me now. I do applaud thy counsel. Hence, be gone. We'll hear no parley now but by our swords. Alarm to the fight! Sound! Sound the alarm! Ah! 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 Thus follow me, Prince. Yes, Vortiger, to thy death I will. Stay, be advised. I slew the brother. Thou didst, black traitor, and in that vengeance I pursue thee. Oh, take mercy for the self, and fly my sword. Save thine own life is thy satisfaction. The kingdom which thou usurps, most unhappy tyrant, is leaving thee. The Saxons which thou brought'st to back thy usurpations are grown great. Thou base destroyer of thy native country. What? Stand here talking, fight! Oh, right victory yourself fights on our part. Justice is with her! Yeah! <laughs> because our fortune's good, Prince. Hopeful and fair, brave Cater, proud Vortiger, beaten down by Edel's sword, was rescued by the following multitudes, and now for safeties fled into the castle. We'll send in wildfire to burn them all with flaming violence. Look, Edel, 
a blazing star in the sky. There in the beam that's about the flaming ring, a dragon head appears, from whose mouth two flaming flakes of fire stretch east and west. See, from forth the body of the star, seven smaller blazing streams directly point on this affrighted kingdom. Tis a dreadful meteor. It doth pretend strange fear. This is no crown of peace. This angry fire hath, hath something more to burn than Vortiger, for Vortiger is dead, burned alive. Never come without the large effects. The will of heaven be done. Our sorrows this. We want a mystic prophet to expound this fiery oracle. Oh no, my lord, you have the best that ever Britain bred. <laughs> you mean young Merlin? True, sir. Wondrous Merlin. He met us on the way. And did foretell the fortunes of this day successful to us. If I could give faith to any wizard's skill, it should be he. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Merlin, oh, oh. <laughs> The comments in his eyes disturb him not. With what a piercing judgment he beholds it. Whether will heaven and fate translate this kingdom? If revolutions rise and fall of nations is figured yonder in that star. It sings the change of Britain's state and death of kings. Oh. He's dead already. How oh, swiftly. Mischief creeps, uh, like fatal end, sweet prince. Even Merlin weeps. He does foresee some evil, his action shows it. For ere he does expound, he weeps the story. Gentle Merlin, speak thy prophetic knowledge in explanation of this fiery horror. Fair prince, but you must hear the rest with patience. I vow I will, though it portend my ruin. There is no such fear. This comet brought the fiery fall of Vortiger, and yet not him alone. This day has fallen a king more good than the glory of our land. The mild and gentle, sweet Aurelius. Oh, brother! Offend in heaven! He... At his royal palace, sir, this day is dead and poisoned. By whom? Or what means, Merlin? By the traitorous Saxons. That devil Astorius and the damned witch Artesia have done it. Dear Prince, comfort yourself. The heavens have given it fully. Now hear a happy story, sir, from me to you and for your full posterity. He thinks I see something like a bee of onion. It makes me weep. Be silent, uncle. You will be forced else. Can you not find in the star, cousin, whether I can hold my tongue or no? Yes. I must cut it out. Yeah! Now, speak. Your pleasure, uncle. <laughs> now, observe, my lord, and there behold, above yon flame-haired beam that upward shoots, appears a dragon's head. The dragon's head is a hieroglyphic that figures out your princely self, and here must reign a king, who, by formed fires that from the dragon's mouth shoot east, and west emblem two royal babes, which shall proceed from you, a son and a daughter. Her pointed constellation, northwest bending, crowns her a queen in Ireland, of whom first springs that kingdom's title to Britain kings. I do have a head and I the handle on Ireland. But 
of your son, thus fate and Merlin tells. All after times shall fill their chronicles with fame of his renown, whose warlike sword shall pass through fertile France and Germany. Nor shall his conquering foot be forced to stand till Rome's imperial wrath wreath hath crowned his, his fame. He back returns to enlarge the Britain bounds, his heraldry adorned with 13 crowns. <laughs> he to the world shall add another worthy. It shall be then the best of knighthood's honor. And Winchester to fill his castle hall and at his royal table sit and feast in warlike orders, all their arms round hurled, as if they meant to circumscribe the world. Thou speakest of wonders, Merlin. Thine art hath made such proof that we believe. Thy words authentical. Be ever near us, my prophet and the guide of all my actions. My service shall be faithful to your person and all my studies to my country. Come, come. You are released, sir. <laughs> I was so long dumb, I could not tell whether I spake or no. <laughs> Is thy advice we presently pursue thy bloody Saxons that have slain my brother? With your best speed, my lord. Take this title with you, royal prince. Long live King Uder! Long live King Uder! The dragon is your emblem. Bear it bravely and serve. Live so long and ever happy. Styled Uta Pendragon, lawful king of Britain. Thanks, Edel. We embrace the name and title. O oh, my Aurelius, sweet, rest thy soul. Let thy disturbed spirit expect revenge. The dragon's coming in his fiery wrath. Ah! Hence, thou black horror, is thy lustful fire kindled again? Not thy loud throat thunder nor thy adulterate infernal music shall I ever witch me more. Why dost thou fly me? I come a lover to thee to embrace and gently twine thy body in my arm. Out thy hell hound! What hound so e'er I be, fawning and sporting as I would with thee? Why should I not be stroked and laid with all? Wilt thou not think the lion might devour thee if I should let thee pass? Free me, and I'll thank ye. I am at home with thee. Thou art mine own. Have we not charge of family together? Where is thy son? Oh, darkness, cover me. Ah, there is a pride which thou hast won by me, the mother of a thing which shall never die. Kings shall have need of written chronicles to keep their name alive, but Merlin none. Oh, rot my memory before my flesh. Let me be called some hell or earth-bred monster that ne'er had hapless woman for his mother. Oh, sweet death, deliver me. Oh, hence from my sight, why shouldst thou now appear, devil? I am the same I was. But I am changed. Again I'll change thee, just the same thou wert, to quench my lust. Help me some saving hand. Let mercy come. Stay back, you slave of night. Let loose your hold. Set her down safe, or by the infernal sticks I'll bind you up with exorcism so strong that all the blast chains of hell shall ne'er release you. Ah, uh, what's he? The child has found his father. Do you not know me? Merlin. Oh, help me, gentle son. No, no. He shall not hurt you. Oh. Believest thou her to disobey thy father? Yeah. Obedience is no lesson in your school, nature and 
kind to her commands my duty. The path that you begot was against kind. So all I owe to you is to be unkind. Ah! I'll blast this slave to death upon this rock. Thy ah! power is too weak. What art thou, devil, but an inferior lust for weakness? Put off the form of thy humanity and crawl upon thy speckled belly serpent, or I'll unclasp the jaws of Archeron and fix thee ever in the legs of fire! Yes! Traitor to hell! Curse that ever I forgot thee! Yes! Did forget thy scourge, storm not, nor stir. The power of Merlin's art is all confirmed. I'll ransack hell and make thy masters bow unto my spells! <laughs> Never shall thou touch a woman more, father. How cheer thee, mother. Oh, now my son is my deliverer. Hark, how the sounds of war now call me hence to aid Uta Pendragon, that in battle stands against the Saxons, from whose aid Merlin must not be absent. Leave the soil there, mother. And when you die, I will erect a monument upon the verdant plains of Salisbury. No king shall have so high a henge of stone, a place that I will hollow for your rest. Where no night hag shall walk, nor where will tread, where Merlin's mother shall be sepulchred. Go, the stony inch for Joan Go Toot. Sincerely, God on high, I have told you all. My daughters are both vowed to a single life, and this day gone to a nunnery. I am lost. They are lost. All is lost. <laughs> Answer me this, then. Is it a sin to marry? Oh, my daughters. My memory shall lose them now forever. <laughs> see, see the noble lords, their promised husbands. Oh, had fate so pleased, you might have called me father. Does hopes are past, my lord. For even this minute, we saw them both enter the monastery, secluded from the world and men forever. But from the king, take you the time's joy from us. The Saxon king Astorius slain and Octa fled. That woman fury Queen Artesia is fast in hold and forced to redeliver London and Winchester, which she had fortified to princely Uter, lately styled Pendragon, who now triumphantly is marching hither to be infested with the Briton crown. <laughs> the joy of this shall banish from my breast all thought that I was father to two children, <laughs> two stubborn daughters that have left me thus. Let my old arms embrace and call you sons. For by the honor of my father's house, I'll cut my estate equally betwixt you. Sir, you're most excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we have firm hope that though our dragons sleep, Merlin will us and our fair kingdom keep. As his uncle lives, I warrant you. Happy restorer of Britain's fame, uprising sun, let us salute thy glory. Stay, noble Donabare. That monster first must be expelled from our eye, or we shall take no joy in it. From hell's heart I spit at thee! <laughs> Give her quick judgment. Send her hence to death. She has long deserved it. And my sentence stand for all. Take her hence, and stake her carcass in the burning sun. 
till it be parched and dry, and then flay off her wicked skin, and stuff the pelt with straw to be shown up and down at fairs and markets. Two pence apiece to see so foul the monster will be a fair monopoly, and worth the begging. <laughs> Dost thou laugh, Succubus? Yes, at thy poor invention. Is there no better torture monger? <laughs> Burn her to dust. That's a phoenix death and glorious. Aye, that's too good for her. Alive she shall be buried, circled in a wall, thou murderess of a king, there starve to death. Then I'll starve death when he comes for his prey. And in the meantime, I'll live and feed upon your curses. Aye, <laughs> tis that good enough. Away with her. With joy. My best of wishes is before thy brother's poison, but I wanted more. <laughs> Whoa. Why does our prophet Merlin stand apart, sadly observing these our ceremonies? Long happiness attend, and dragons reign, for heaven decrees fate hath no power to alter. Thanks be to our great prophet. All future times shall still record this story of Merlin's learned worth and Arthur's glory. Long live Pendragon! Long live Merlin! I'll be waiting, my child. 